Woke up this morning, Friday, March 24th, 2023, to a sea of red in major EU bank stock losses. After last weekend's takedown and UBS's buyout of Credit Suisse for a few Cooper nickel valued US quarters per stock share, it now seems the bank shorting crowd has begun taking dead aim at another major teetering global systematic important bank, or GSIB, a major German one called Deutsche Bank. A far more connected and threatening tier two bucket shop, I mean, tier two global systematically important bank as defined by the BIS's Financial Stability Board in late 2022, credit default swaps or CDS insurance purchased against the potential failure of that major German GSIP bank are again running up a wall, while the bank's stock price seemingly continues to tank in value. Here's how Deutsche Bank's rising CDS panic currently compares with the recently failed Credit Suisse. More coverage on this major story in a minute. But, but first, this week the Fiat Federal Reserve raised its Fiat Fed funds rate another 25 basis points, or one quarter of 1%. Currently they're supposed to be fighting price inflation while also purportedly also battling against the further failure and or consolidation of our increasingly brittle and collapsing banking system both domestically and internationally speaking. The return of their infinite QE tool appears to be again driving up the fiat Fed's balance sheet rising again this week. In two weeks, nearly two thirds of all the supposed quantitative tightening over the last year, it's been erased in a vertical rise. Here's a look in nominal terms, the last two weeks ballooning of the fiat Fed's balance sheet in relation to the COVID pandemic looting of the treasury via untold corrupt PPP loans and the 2008 GFC apex. Here's a look as well at the fiat US dollar spot gold price and how it's held up in the face of the second fastest raising of interest rates era by the full fiat federal reserve since the secular inflationary 1970s. At some point recession will likely hit hard and rate cuts will follow in due course. It's typically gold surges in such an environment. And add in the possibility that the fiat US dollar is at some point going to waltz into a secular bear market versus other commodity producing emerging market countries' currencies, and the potential for gold to really get running gets ramped. Turning now to Russia and its increasingly friendly trading partner of China. Chinese President Xi Jinping was in Moscow this week visiting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. And while China continues stacking mass gold bullion imports from weak Western hands, a clip not consistently seen for some time now, Russia also announced this week they stacked another 1 million troy ounces or nearly one metric ton of official gold bullion. <laughs> This premeditated and obviously staged for global media goodbye, it was translated that Chinese President Xi Jinping stated, quote, Right now there are changes, the likes of which we haven't seen for 100 years, and we are the ones driving these changes together. Nice job, U.S. Pentagon and State Department. While the writing has been on the wall for now nearly decades running, this increasingly budding relationship between Russia and China was what our supposed unipolar empire was hell bent on somehow thwarting. Well, it looks like we failed, and it's becoming increasingly obvious to anyone actually doing the research, the world's monetary reserve and trading dynamics are rapidly changing. Also, many perceive that statement to have meant the move towards a more multipolar world and a less US dollar dominant unipolar one is afoot. A world in which gold reserves will certainly matter in terms of sovereign reserves, as it always has. Also, someone please tell me we're not just going to repeat a Roman Empire like collapse, but worse, debasing our currency even faster, our once sound circulating currencies into what, the fiat CBDC system coming? Please someone tell me we're not just going to repeat a Roman Empire-like collapse.
Hello on behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson with your weekly bullion market update. Before we go any further, smash the like button so we can share this content with other like-minded sound money stackers. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more complimentary weekly updates to come, and don't forget to enter our free bullion giveaway. SD Bullion Silver Eagle Monster Box Sweepstakes is back! And with it, another opportunity to win 500 Silver Eagle coins just like this guy. Yeah, this is Kevin. Hi Kevin, this is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. I'm calling to you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a Monster Box of 2022 Silver Eagle. Unbelievable. That is awesome. <laughs> I Sorry, I'd, you know. I'd be a lot more excited, but I'm at work, so I can't really scream and holler too much. <laughs> so click the link below, because the next big winner could be you. The monetary precious metals had a mixed but mostly positive week in trading. The spot gold price briefly cleared the key 2,000 ounce price resistance psychological level multiple times this week, only to finish just under 2,000 per troy ounce spot. Of course, in the physical bullion world, most retail investment grade bullion products have been trading over 2,000 ounce for some time running. The spot silver price ran upwards for most of the week, closing with an interesting wedge pattern where long traders were likely taking some of their week's gains into the weekend. The spot gold silver ratio slid down to 85 to end the week. Since the Chinese president injected 100 year rare changes earlier in the video here, I figured I'd show you this 200 year gold silver ratio chart provided by Incrementum this week in a preview of their coming 2023 in gold we trust chart book. The over two century GSR median is around 30.4 on this chart, which is pretty much just below my conservative suggestion that the 2011 low GSR of 33 will eventually get spiked down and perhaps passed in an epic bullion bull market mania phase to come. Let's go deeper on the long view side of things, silver related, with a few long term charts I enjoyed finding this week. I figured you guys might enjoy seeing them. Here's an epically large silver price chart for the United Kingdom spanning over 700 years. The once unipolar dominant British Empire's quasi gold backing once it fell apart post World Wars. Silver and fiat British pound, not sterling, began stair stepping higher. When I look at this chart, I mean, to me, it appears silver and fiat British pounds is preparing to take another giant stair step to come. Here's an interesting one for U.S. silver prices spanning from the original Great Depression to the 1980 peak and still seemingly ancient nominal price high for silver of 50 fiat Fed notes per troy ounce. Now, an even wider update to today's view of this gigantic cup handle formation for silver building. Okay, let's get back toward present day roughly, focusing in on silver over the last handful of years. These are some of the near key price levels requiring breaching for a declared breakout in silver. Also at the moment, thus far in 2023, India has not been importing much silver bullion to start the year as their market is currently swamped with large inventories and a local discount that's formed that formed at the end of last year, 2022. Likely there's a lot of secondary silver bullion in that market as well. The world's second largest silver ore producing nation, Peru, is reporting large decreases in year on year or month on month silver mining from January 22 to January 2023, for instance. SRS Rocco report framed Peru's weakening silver ore output like so. For my fellow long term platinum bulls out there, it seems the continued platinum for palladium thrifting has contributed to the continuing collapse of palladium prices while platinum's price chart is beginning to look poised for a coming run. Similar to the physical silver market, the platinum market is looking at physical deficits currently with demand outpacing supply and perhaps for years to come. And that might be why China in recent years rated platinum NYMEX warehouse bullion inventories, not merely industrial stockpiling and thrifting out platinum industrial inputs, but also simply seeing good long-term strategic value for extremely rare platinum bullion piles currently priced at half of golds. And while another major global systematic important bank threatens us all to begin a potential major bank failure sequence, I have my eyes on soon buying some extremely rare platinum, even possibly acquiring an 
like so for the long term in a disappearing Hallmark format. That's all for this week's SD Bullion Market Update. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Thank you.